Uh, okay. Um, quick announcement. Um, the MUDAC competition is coming up, and I know some people already signed up for that, but uh, some uh, there's we're still recruiting it. I don't know if you're familiar with MUDAC, but um, it's the Minnesota has a data analytics organization. It's based in the cities, although we do have uh, some talks uh, here in Duluth. And later on this spring, I'll give you extra credit for going for it to one, probably. Um, so, um, and there's a competition for undergraduate data analytics. It's April 6th and 7th down in Mankato. And we're sending at least one team uh, there. It's um, it's not. It, it was an in-person event. Then again, it went virtual, and now it's in person again. And basically, you go down there, and I think you have about a day. You're given a challenge, and you have a day to, as a team, uh, to try to analyze some data, do some uh, modeling on it, and create some uh, presentations or some information about it. Uh, there. Uh, it helps if we had students who are in or have had machine learning or data visualization. Uh, it's always helpful to have people from different perspectives on it uh, because we never know where the data is coming from or where what perspectives are useful there. So if you're interested in uh, being part of the team or just learning more about it, email Brandon Olson uh, here. So uh, so we're on unit five. I, I've i opened up unit six and have it there because uh, the project's there. Uh, and so I just wanted uh, you to see that and stuff. Uh, so unit six is also open, but we're still back in unit five here uh, for this. So, um, we are going to just walk through the learning notebook here, uh, this practice five convolutional neural network notebook. So we're just gonna walk through that today. So if you click on that and open it up, uh, it should open up this notebook. Just like uh, other times we have a write-up, so open that up, that write-up. You probably may wanna make a copy, of course, of each one. So this is my copy of this, and here's my copy of the write-up for this. So we're going to look at these convolutional neural networks again and try to get them to figure out, make sure we have an understanding of how these work. These are actually still used a lot today. These layers are used a lot today. Um, one of the reasons is they all, just about any sort of image processing we're doing is using some sort of convolutional layers uh, for this. So um, like if you think of any image generation techniques or stuff like that, uh, a lot of those are using these convolutional layers. So we're just doing categorization right now where we're just taking an image and trying to say that's a dog or that's a giraffe uh, sort of stuff. But once you have that basic kind of structure, these convolutional layers down, you can create other networks like common thing is to draw boxes around things and identify things or color things different colors and say this region is a person and this region is a car and so like all the self-driving vehicle sort of stuff are using techniques like that um we can also set these up so that like we are taking an image and generating just an outcome cat dog or some simple output but you can also take these uh, and we'll look at what we call encoder decoder networks in a couple of weeks where you'll take an, Im an image or some input and uh, you'll convert it and then you'll generate a new image as output uh, here. So 
these convolutional layers are are very useful to in a lot of areas here. Um, so our first task is we're going to open up this spreadsheet and see if you really understand how these filters work uh, here. Uh, and I think one way to me, for me, for you to try to understand that is to um, try to do it by hand. I always tell programmers, you know, if you if you can't do an algorithm by hand, it's really hard to program a computer to do that. And so we're going to try to do that same thing here. Uh, so if you open up this spreadsheet, this is our picture. Now that's supposed to be a peace sign. I'm sorry, it looks an awful lot like an alien uh, there, but I, the idea originally was peace sign, alien, whatever. Uh, that's our, our image uh, here. So again, uh, it's color, but it's really just a grayscale image here. Uh, so some of the pixels are zero, the darker ones, uh, and the whiter ones are 255. So this is our image. It is 16 by 16 pixels uh, here. And uh, this is the, you know, the pixel value, the grayscale value of each one. So this is our original image down here. And we're gonna do a two by two max filter on this image uh, here um, for this. I'm gonna delete some of these and do these again. So um, let's just start. So what does a two by two filter do uh, we are going to pick a two by two area. And again, we're going to start in the, I'm going to start at the top left. And I'm going to look at the those four values and we're going to do a max pooling uh, two by two filter. So that means I find the maximum. They're all the same. They're all 255. So the maximum is 255. So I'm going to put that value up here. So these four cells here go up here. Just to kind of help to keep track, I'm going to put a border around this uh, so that we can see that we did that section. Okay, so we did that section here. And that was this one right there. Okay, now we're going to do a stride of two. So I'm going to move two to the right and do this section right there. So I'm gonna, uh, and again, I'm look, look at these four pixels. And again, the biggest ones, there's 255, 255, 255, and 200. And the biggest one is 255. So I'm gonna put a 255 there. So again, these four pixels there, let me pick a different color for this. Uh, are generating this pixel here. So again, these four colors are generating this pixel here. And again, then I move over two pixels and I do the next two by two grid here. And now I've got, I've got 150, 150, 100, 100. What's the biggest one? The biggest one's 150, so I put that up here. So again, these ones, let me pick yet a different color here. Um, so you can see for every two by two grid here, I generate one pixel up above. Here. And we want you to do some new pixels. So this would be another blob uh, here. I'm going to do that in the same color. And this would be a new blob. Uh, so again, this would be uh, in this color. Another 150. And then you want to do like this one or this one. I want you to start filling in some of this uh, step one stuff. You don't have to fill in all of that grid but I want you to fill in some of that grid with some numbers. And again, we can go down a level. So like here, uh, this is another two by two grid. 
and I can fill in these blanks uh, and generate this 255. Uh, here. So these uh, ones, and so like these, this is a 200. Uh, I'll mark those up. We'll generate this 200. This would be 100. We'll generate this 100. So see, I want to see if you can understand what max pooling is. And so then for your write-up, I want to describe what it does uh, here. Uh, how does this work? And then update this. And then eventually I want to, you should make a copy of this if you haven't already. And then you'll want to submit your copy of this. Uh, or part three. So part question one about one, write a little bit about how this max pooling works. Question one about two, and then for part one dot three, you'll submit a link to your spreadsheet here. And again, you can just go to share uh, and copy that link, share it with everyone with the link or something like that so that I can see it. If you're, if you want another description of this uh, for your write-up, uh, you know, I can just take this and ask an AI to describe this. Uh, this is chat GPT. I forgot to tell it to be brief. So it goes on and on, uh, but it talks about max pooling uh, techniques. It's, it calls it a down sampling or feature extraction. Uh, where we're downsampling makes means we're making the image smaller uh, here. So we have a two by two window that's moved across the image at each position to filter cover the two by two region. We find the maximum value uh, in each two by two region. And then we're creating a pooled image. And again, that's what we have up here. Kind of step one is our pooled image. This is 16 by 16. The pooled image will be eight by eight. Uh, here, uh, and it talks a little bit more about this. Questions on this max pooling? Are you able to do this? Yeah. Can you show like an example or the differences between step one and step two and step two? Yeah, let's go on. So I'm gonna do step two next. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna clear out. I've been doing these borders. I'm gonna let's we clear out these borders a little bit. Um And oh, let me just fill in a couple more values. I forget. So this is, I should have done this before, 255, 255, 150, 150, and we get another 150. And I think this is a 100. And then we have a 150 below it, I think, okay. So you filled in some of these values. Now, this we did a two by two max pooling here. The next thing we don't want to do is apply this kernel here. So this is our three by three kernel, and we're going to do that. And if you remember kind of our pictures here, uh, again, where we're applying this kernel again and again and moving it over. And so we multiply each relative spot by the corresponding spot in the kernel uh, or the filter uh, to get the results. And we sum them all up uh, here. We looked um, here. 
Um, oh no, that's it. Okay. So let's just do that. So here's our stuff. So again, we're gonna apply, go to this region. Let me highlight that area. Um, So this in orange is my top left three by three area. And here is my filter down here uh, uh, for this. So now I'm gonna take each of these values uh, here and write them out. So maybe I'll just note them in notepad down here. Okay, so I'm going to take the top one, which is 255, 255, and I'm going to multiply that times one, which is this one down here, times one. And then if I go to the right, it's going to be 255, 255 times, and in this case, it's going to be zero times zero. And if I go right again, it's a 150 times, and in this case, it's a negative one. And then I'm going to go down, the next row is a 255. And then this corresponding one is a one times one. And then a 150 times zero. And then a 100 times negative one. So again, it's as if I'm taking this block here and laying it over this one so that this one would be on top of this one, 255 times one. And then if I go down this 255 times one, and this is 200 times one. So again, my third row would be a 200 times one, a 150 times zero, and then a 150 times negative one. Uh, so basically what this is kind of saying is this filter, the left side is all multiplied by ones, the middle row is multiplied by zeros, and the right row is multiplied by negative ones. So then these are all multiplied by ones, these are multiplied by zeros, and these are multiplied by negative ones here. So this is the kind of grid I get. And I total those up. Uh, here. So I sum up all these. So basically what I'm saying is that I'm going to add these all up uh, as I go. Oops. Uh, I'm going to sum these all up. So what is... Uh, I'll do the multiplication first. The first one is 255 times one is 255. Then I'm gonna add in zero, it's anything times zero is zero. And then I'm gonna actually subtract, I'm gonna have a negative 150. And then I'm gonna have a 255, 255 times one is 255 plus zero, which is the middle row is multiplied by 150 times zero is zero. And then, 100 times negative one is a negative 100. And then the last row is 200 times one is 200. 100 plus 150 times zero is zero. And then 150 times negative one uh, is a negative 150. And I'm gonna add those all up uh, here. So bring up my handy dandy calculator. And I'm going to go uh, 255 plus zero plus or, or a negative 150 plus 255 
I'm just going to go minus 100 plus 200 plus zero minus 150. And I end up with 310. So this first value should be 310 here. But I can't have values above 255. That's my ceiling. Oh, uh, there, that's as well, right as we can get. So anything above 255, we just say is 255. So, uh, so here's our rules. If a value is less than zero, if the sum is less than zero, then the value is zero. If the sum is greater than 255, then the value is 255 here uh, for this. So we'll do this and then we'll shift. And now when we move over, we'll just do a stride of one. We'll move over just one location here. So let me highlight this in a different color. Let's do a bright blue here. So again, this first square would be uh, 255, and then the blue square would be one over. The, so the orange one is there. Now the next one, I can do that calculation two and see what that is. And then you can move it over uh, here. And it would be nice if you could get, at least like in this step two, a three by three or a three by four grid, a little bigger grid here. Well. Yeah, it'd be nice to do, uh, yeah, I guess you have to do at least out to here so that we can do step three, which is apply our two by two max filter again. So, so again, this, if I do the blues, that'll be 255. Let's do another grid here. Yellow. If you start getting used to this, what you realize here, this filter, you're just adding up all of the left column, all the right middle ones are zero and you're subtracting the right column. So I can actually do this relatively quickly if I have a calculator nearby. I close my calculator. I can just say, so this is 150 plus 100 plus 150, that's the first column. And then I'm gonna subtract the other side, minus 150 minus 100 minus 150. And I'm gonna end up with zero. In fact, if I looked, they all, block each other out. So this is actually going to end up to be a zero here. So see if you can figure out, fill these in. Uh, for your write-up, you have to describe what, what are you actually doing when you do a three by three kernel uh, here? Uh, how does it change the size of our image? Is the image the same size? Um, and stuff like that. So, this is all we're going to do today. I'm just going to give you a heads up on what is uh, next week. We're going to continue doing CNNs next week. Um, one of the things we'll find is that training these is going to take a long time. In class, we'll do uh, try to do the full uh, Caltech 256, and often that training uh, will take a long time. You know, can take minutes, if not an hour, uh, here. So what we'll try to also do is we'll there'll be pre pre-trained models. 
and we'll want to look at these pre-trained models and bring those in. We'll talk about ways of using these pre-trained models. And then for the project next uh, week, uh, and if, again, if you want, you can probably get started on some of this uh, now. Um, there's two different Kegel challenges. One is to recognize pneumonia from chest x-rays uh, here. And the other is a humpback whale identification uh, here. Um, humpback whales have unique tails when they dive. People take pictures of the tails and you can actually tell each humpback whale from its whale tail pattern uh, there. And there's been an ongoing research project. There's a huge database of whale tails out there and it's been numerous Kegel challenges. So it's a really well-known data set out there. It's kind of fun uh, to do uh, and see. Couple, two years ago, I was out visiting. Uh, we were out visiting our son out in Bellingham, Washington. We went on a whale tour and we you usually just see killer whales, but that day we got to see a humpback whale out there and the guide got a picture of it and submitted it and we could actually uh, tell which whale it was uh, from that. So um, we'll be doing more of what we're kind of doing today where we're going to try to test something out and see if it works. We'll be bringing in a little more of this scientific method where we'll be actually making a hypothesis and testing out that hypothesis uh, here. And this will actually start prepping us for our uh, final project where you're going to do something similar to this in your final project too. So that'll be next week. So uh, again, if you get this done, make at least two changes to your notebook. Try to get your scores up uh, if you can and submit that. Well, then we'll see you next week.